guys what is going on. I am here to react to the pitch meeting for James Bond, Die Another Day. Now it's been a while since I've done the pitch meeting reaction and I'm actually kind of sad about that, but there was a reason for it. I was trying to incorporate a lot of things that I like doing, which is literally films, food and travel, and just trying to figure out how to maneuver it on my channel. So what I'm doing is each week I'm doing a film related video and then a food travel related video. And I'm not gonna say it out into the universe because normally when I put out what I plan on scheduling, uh, it never works because something ends up happening. So just look forward to a food travel vlog and a film content video coming out every week. Also with this film, I really wanted to talk about it because I've seen this film. It's actually one of my, one of my favorite films before Daniel Craig took over the role of uh, James Bond because I enjoyed the Asian guy in it who was actually in Fast and Furious and another dude in it that I don't know the name of per se, but he was, I believe he was the guy in Black Sails. You know, I just like both of their characters, but I also like them as actors as well. And so watching it and then the absurdity that is James Bond and then also Holly Berry, I don't know. I like Halle Berry and it's funny because I used to like her a lot as an actress but as she's gotten older doing things she does a lot of cliche kind of corny things and a lot of the lines in this film that she has is a little corny <laughs> but she's pretty she's very pretty she has an amazing body and I wonder what Ryan George is going to say about it because I have not seen this thing yet so I'm watching it new with you guys and for those that have already seen it well I'm watching it late so now you get to hear what I got to say about this so here we go. So you have a new James Bond movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> so we're going to meet up with Bond in North Korea, right? And he's dealing with this bad guy, That's Colonel right. Moon. Okay. But then things turn bad, so he gets into this big chase in a massive minefield. But they're in hover cars, so, you know, they're not setting them. I forget, literally, this film is so absurd. Like, watching it now compared to when I was watching it back then, it's so over the top. James Bond tends to be like that, but it's funny because... And Daniel Craig's Casino Royale, which is one of my favorite James Bonds, which I'm going to react to. He did a pitch meeting to Casino Royale two years ago, but I'm going to watch it because I didn't, I didn't realize that that was a thing. This film is like over the top, which all of them are, but this one like started to ride the cheese train and I was just like, ooh, but I enjoy it still because of those two actors that I mentioned earlier. But um, yeah, I forgot, I forgot all about this beginning scene. Oh, very oh that's right, because he gets, he gets tortured. That's basically the whole entire opening scene. He gets tortured by the North Koreans. Totally forgot about that. And then Moon accidentally drives off a cliff while James Bond hangs on to a giant bell. So he's like, you know, looks like I was saved by the bell. Well, who does he say that to? <laughs> Unclear, sir. He's all by himself. But then a bunch of other North Koreans show up, so he gets in prison. How'd they get across the minefield? Did they have hovercrafts too? No, they just drove a bunch of jeeps through the minefield. That makes sense. So then we're gonna get right into our classic James Bond musical intro thing. And what's going on in this one? Well, I figure we could have clips of James Bond being tortured while Madonna performs a song in whatever pop trend she's trying to emulate right now. <laughs> oh, being tortured to Madonna music is tight. Oh my God. Wow, gee, you know, I don't even know what I meant by that one, but you know, <laughs> something's not right up here. I feel. I'm not gonna lie, I liked her song. That song, Die Another Day, that she did, amazing. I think his reaction to his line was beautiful because <laughs> that was funny as hell. I actually really liked her song. I really liked it a lot, and I don't know why. And yeah, he was being tortured, and yeah, it was kind of weird, but I still liked the song in it. I don't know, but I ain't gonna lie, Ranger's reaction was kind of funny. So anyway, after 14 months, MI6 decides to trade Bond for this guy, Zhao. And what's his deal? Well, because of this explosion that Bond caused at the beginning of the movie, this guy has a bunch of di- I love him so much. <laughs> he is so cute. And I remember him from Fast and the Furious. I don't know what else he's been in, and I'm sure he's been in other things, but I remember him first from this film, and then I saw Fast and the Furious, and I was like, there is no reason why this guy is so cute, but we'll, we'll let it go. We will let it go. Stuck in the skin of his face. Okay, I feel like those would be incredibly easy to remove. Well, they're not. But like, yes, though. Well, yeah, obviously, probably, but they're gonna look very cool. So I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about face diamonds. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. So then Bond finds out that somebody set him up to make him look like he was leaking information to the North Koreans, which is why MI6 wanted to get him out. Oh, very sneaky. Yeah, so he gets his double O status revoked <laughs> and he has to escape this MI6 facility 
facility. Oh man, that's gonna be hard to do. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, see, he just stops his own heart with his mind and then shocks some doctors <laughs> and runs away. Why is he gotta say it like that? I mean, granted, it does happen like that. And again, with the absurdity of this film, how are you able to just stop your heart from beating? But it was just really funny because he literally, there was no fight to be had. He literally did that and then walked out and I think he kissed the girl on the way out or something. Probably. I wouldn't be shocked if he did. I could be making that up. What kind of complex was this? <laughs> he literally could have just walked out at any given time with how easy that whole situation went. Thinks himself into cardiac arrest? Yeah, he thinks himself into cardiac arrest and then when they least expect it, he strikes. He strikes while his heart is not working. Yes, because his heart isn't pumping blood. Oh, I see what he's doing. <laughs> Ryan, don't do it. Don't think about it too much because you know what happens when you think about things too much? You start asking questions. You know what happens when we do that around here. Yes, because his heart isn't pumping blood through his body. He has the element of surprise. That's... <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so then Bond <laughs> swims over to this Hong Kong hotel where it turns out he knows the owner. Oh, wow. Well, thank God he was swimming distance from a hotel he was familiar with. <laughs> it works out great, but then he finds out he's being spied on by a camera crew in his closet. Well, what kind of spying strategy is that? What if he needed to use the closet? Unclear, <laughs> but then Bond finds out from the hotel owner that that Zhao guy is at this place in Cuba. Oh, Diamond Face. That's right. So yeah. Bond goes to Cuba and this attractive lady named Jinx comes out of the water in slow motion with a tactical knife on her bikini. Swimming and stabbing do go hand in hand. No red flags there. Yeah, so then her and Bond hook up just a few seconds after meeting. That checks out. And then the next day, Bond finds Zhao in this clinic that changes your appearance with DNA restructuring by changing your bone marrow. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like the whole transition of him having the blue eyes and the bald head. It kind of grew on me as the film went on, but I didn't. I Looking back at it now, it's kind of gross. I don't like it. Take the blue out of your eyes, keep it brown, keep your hair. But that body though, listen, are we reacting to the film or to this dude? I'm losing all focus. I really like this guy. I think this guy is so attractive. Several of those words sounded scientific, so I'll assume that makes sense. Oh, please do. And then it turns out that Jinx is also some kind of secret agent. So James Bond is like, wait, what? What, the woman with a tactical knife on her bikini wasn't a normal civilian? I know, it's pretty <laughs> shocking. So then Bond finds this diamond and he traces it to this British billionaire, Gustav. Oh man, this dude. Okay, so it's so funny because when he's in black sales, he is like really rugged. He has the beard, you know, he, the way the characters are in Black Sails. So seeing in, him in this film, it was just so funny. Outside of like watching him in a British show that I was watching about crime, and I think he was like a police officer or something like that, has never really had this sort of, like he never looked like this. He never had this sort of persona uh, outside of that British show. Cause I've always seen him just in Black Sails outside of this film. And he was just so dirty, rugged, not clean cut like here, but I really liked it. And I was like, dude, why is he attractive wise? I wouldn't go for that because he's way too clean cut for me. But like he had an attractiveness to him maybe because he was the villain. So you see him all clean cut, talking all prim and proper, but you know, he's evil. I don't know something about it, but it was just really funny seeing him in this and then immediately after seeing him in black sails and it's like oh shit that's awesome this guy gets knighted by the queen and he's like an olympic level fencing champion so he's pretty intense yeah sure sounds that way so then he challenges bond to this crazy over the top fencing fight and bond beats him james bond who was just tortured in a north korean prison for 14 months and presumably did no fencing during that time yeah he beats the olympic level fencing champion who practices just constantly that makes sense to me yeah me too and so then because he wins, this guy invites him to a fancy <laughs> It's when I take a break from pitch meetings and I come back and I realize how funny Ryan George actually is and how much I actually enjoy doing these reactions. The way he explains a situation that sounds just as absurd as it actually is, is just the funniest thing because I'm watching the film myself and I'm like, that doesn't make sense, but maybe I'm the only one that thinks that. Maybe to the rest of the world that's watching it, it doesn't, it makes a lot of sense to them. And then listening to him talk about it, it's like, oh. <laughs> uh, Ryan, I've missed you. I am so upset that I've been away for so long. I will not let you go away again like that. I'm so sorry.
guy invites him to a fancy party at this ice structure he has in Iceland. Oh, what for? Well, it's an unveiling of this new sun harvesting device, which is actually a massive space-based super weapon. Oh, man, bad guys love having cocktail parties to unveil WMDs. They sure do, sir. But before Bond can go to this ice palace party, he goes to see Q to get some gadgets. Very fun. What's he getting this time? Well, the big thing he's going to get is this invisible car, which works by having tiny cameras all over project what they see onto the other side of the car. Oh, man, I bet he's going to find some cool uses for that thing. Oh, you know it, sir. Well, you know, once. Oh, yeah, the camouflage malfunctions pretty much the whole time, but then it randomly turns on, which tricks the bad guy into falling off a cliff thing. Okay. Oh, and then also at a certain point, he hides behind the car, so, you know, that's pretty useful. Well, you said the cameras project what they see onto the other side of the car. How could he hide behind it? I don't know. Fair <laughs> enough. So then we're going to have this big reveal where it turns uh... out this Gustav guy, he's actually Colonel Moon, the guy who drove off the cliff in the beginning. Mm. Oh, he didn't die. He survived, sir, and he did that DNA bone marrow thing, so now he's a British guy. And so in 14 months, he had that DNA changing procedure and also recovered from it and also established himself as an Olympic-level fencing guy and also became a billionaire and also had a giant space weapon built <laughs> and an ice palace and he was knighted and established a diamond mine. Oh, uh Enough. I can't. My heart can't take any more of this. Oh, man, I miss pitch meetings so much. <laughs> you know what? Also, I didn't think about the time frame all this was taking. I didn't realize all this was taking place. I knew he was transitioning into the British guy. I knew that. I didn't realize that he was transitioning and it was supposed to be happening within a span of 14 months. That is so funny. I'm telling you, I was just, I was absorbed into the absurdity that is James Bond with Pierce Brosnan. I did not understand the logistics and like, the actual detailing of everything that was taking place because this shit is funny as hell the way he explains it is just so funny dang i forgot how much common sense ryan george actually has he drew and also recovered from it and also established himself as an olympic level fencing guy and also became a billionaire and also had a giant space weapon built and a nice palace and he was knighted and established a diamond mine oh a very productive newly british north <laughs> korean guy so when bond finds out that the guy didn't actually die he's like oh i guess you wanted to die another day okay so i <laughs> What is, uh, what is that? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, that's the name of the movie. That's the name of the movie. <laughs> it is. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Wow. So anyway, eventually he's gonna fire this space weapon at James Bond, who's gonna have to drive away very fast. Oh boy. And this little hook latches to the ground just before he reaches an ice cliff, so he's just hanging on for dear life. Very exciting. That's right, but then Bond is gonna use a parachute and a little piece of this car to do some crazy windsurfing to safety, which I imagine we can pull off convincingly with computers and whatnot. Convincingly? Uh... <laughs> I mean, probably. Great, so then he has to go save Jinx, who in the meantime has drowned in ice cold water. Oh my god. Mm. So he puts her into some warm water and he's like, come on, you can't die, the cold kept you alive. That is how things work. It is, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So then she's all good. Fantastic. But now Gustav, he's dressed like a Power Ranger and his assistant Miranda Frost is in a bra, so they need to go kill them on this plane. Mm. You can't let them escape dressed like that. And this guy's Power mm. Ranger suit electrocutes people with tiny little visible lightning bolts which is how electricity works. Sure. So then Jinx manages to kill Miranda Frost by stabbing a copy of The Art of War through her heart. Oh, that sounds like symbolism for something. I'm almost sure of it. I mean, it's gotta be, right? So then Gustav is about to escape, but Bond presses this button on his suit that electrocutes him, and he flies into the plane engine and dies. Why did he build the suit with a function that electrocutes himself? Unclear. <laughs> Fair enough. So then Bond and Jinx escape on a helicopter, which, as it turns out, is full of diamonds. Oh, nope, those get permanently stuck in your skin. Skin, I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they go make love on the pile of diamonds before turning them in. Oh, that sounds very uncomfortable. Yeah, I imagine that would hurt quite a bit. Where do they even go to do that? Well, they just break into this random house. Oh. Yeah, you know, just some light breaking and entering to have intercourse on some blood diamonds. It's very romantic, <laughs> I guess. And so, yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, sounds like an over-the-top cheesy James Bond movie, you know? Could be a classic. Yeah, it could. Or, you know, maybe people will hate it and will have to scrap everything and reboot the franchise oh my goodness <laughs> was that the reason is that the reason why they had to get down the oh <laughs> oh man i didn't think i was gonna laugh this hard wow that joke is so funny all right okay
All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, definitely subscribe. Let me know in the comments below, did you see Die Another Day? What did you think about it? When you were watching it initially, did you understand how nonsensical everything was? Or did you have to watch it years later to fully comprehend? Now, when I, like I said, when I first watched it, I totally got it, but I didn't understand the time frame in between things. So as Ryan George is saying, you know, what he's saying, it just sounds so ridiculous. Also, it's really funny because Halle Berry's character says a lot of cheesy lines. Like when she first is introduced to James Bond, she tells him her name and it's like this really long, stupid name. And then she's like, but my friends call me Jinx. But like, it's a very long, obnoxious name that no one would ever give their child unless they were on some sort of thing, some hallucinogenic, some sort of narcotic. Do you think that John my friends call me Jinx. Jinx, you say? Born on Friday the 13th. I was thinking a lot about it because it really annoyed me. Even when I first watched it, so I was like, what's the point of having that long ass name? You just tell them that your name is Jinx. No one needs to know that you have that stupid name that has at least 15, 15 vowels and consonants in it. Like. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'll be very intrigued to read what you guys think. Also, if you guys have been missing me so, because I have been missing doing these, uh, let me know what other pitch meeting I should be reacting to. Again, one reaction video, or at least a film related video once a week, along with a vlog where I travel around Connecticut and New England for food and drinks. So stay tuned for that. For the most part, for the next, what, three or four weeks, I'm gonna be just putting out my vlogs that I did when I went to Texas. And then after that, I'll start getting into the uh, world of Connecticut. But also stay tuned to Halloween because I have a very awesome Halloween vlog coming out for my experience all throughout October, checking out places in New England and just the things that I was just getting into. But with that being said, I missed you guys so much. Bring on the likes, bring on the comments because no one likes my videos as much as they like my pitch media reactions, which I guess, thanks. <laughs> with that being said, guys, don't forget, I have a lot of other content up here that's actually pretty awesome too, so don't forget to watch it. With that being said, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out, and I'll see you all in the next video.